I want to um, circle back again and talk a little bit more about uh, the uh, the situation regarding uh, the George, George Floyd and the new narrative now about uh, you know how America is replete with racism and you know America as a nation needs to atone for this and we need massive increases in government spending and programs and social awareness. I mean, even you know Uber Eats came out today. And and said that you know they're gonna they're not gonna charge for delivery from black owned restaurants anymore at least till the end of the year right so if you're a black owned business and you want to deliver they're gonna you know give you an advantage uh, you know they want to show that they that they that they care and that they're not discriminating so they're gonna discriminate in favor of black owned businesses and give them a better deal uh, they than they would give uh, white owned in, uh, businesses but all of this uh, newfound sensitivity to this rampant uh, systemic racism has to do with the fact that George Floyd, who happens to be black, died at the hands of police, two of whom out of four, half of the police were white, right? Because if you look at those four guys and they've all been charged now, two of them are white, one of them is Asian and one of them is is black. Now, I mean, he's kind of light skinned black, so I think he, he could be a mixture, but he, I think he identifies as black. But anyway, so let's say he's black. But these four guys, two of whom are white, kill an African-American man. And because the African-American man is black, it's just assumed that this was racially motivated. And the reason that George Floyd is dead is because he's black, right? And that's because black lives don't matter. And that's why the police were so reckless. Either they just were negligent or they deliberately killed him because he's black and because his life doesn't matter. And this incident caught on film is proof Right of what we've all been in denial of, that black lives don't matter, and that it's not just the police, but it's all aspects of American society. This is just the latest example for all to see. And now we all have to you know, have a national effort uh, to do this. And the reason I want to bring it up again is because I happened to look today at a video of another situation that happened four years ago. Right, A guy named Tony Timpa who was a 32-year-old guy, and he lived in, in Dallas, Texas. And he died at the hands of police, right, in circumstances that were almost identical to the circumstances surrounding George Floyd. I mean, almost identical. The main difference was that Tony Timpa was white, right? George Floyd was black, right? And you can Google this on YouTube, and you can see... Uh, the um, what happened. In fact, I watched the entire 40 minutes of raw footage. And I, I would I, you should read that. If I mean, watch the whole thing if you really want to see what happened, because I initially watched a much shorter version. And that one really, really made the police look bad. Not that they weren't bad. But if you just saw, uh, you know, a, a smaller cut and this was all from the the, the 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 webcam, right? That the police had, or their 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 uh, that they wear, their bo body camera, right? So the police had this footage uh, of this guy. Anyway, and I'm gonna I'm gonna go over the the, the, the circumstances. So, 32 year old guy, um, never been in trouble with the police. I mean, 30 he he had he did get a drunk driving at one point, DWI. He was in an accident. Nobody was killed. I mean, he banged up his own car. Got a suspended sentence, but he had never been in prison, right? Uh, whereas George Floyd had been in prison multiple times. I mean, some of them were drug offenses, but the most recent uh, uh, jail was for uh, armed home invasion, where he held an African American woman at gunpoint and ended up going to jail for for five years. So, I mean, he's not the gentle giant that he's being uh, portrayed as. Not that I'm saying that he deserved to be killed, but the point is, this guy had 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 never committed any crimes, never been in jail at all, right? Uh, he's married, he's, you know, he's, he's got an eight-year-old boy and he drove, you know, he went to, drove his Mercedes uh, and he ended up, you know, getting into a sketchy area. And uh, this guy was a schizophrenic. So he had a, a psychological condition, but he wasn't taking his meds. And I think he was a little paranoid and he was also doing coke, right? Because according to the autopsy, he had cocaine in his system. So what happened is the guy got nervous and he got paranoid, right? He he was, you know, he went to like a, he was in an adult bookstore or a sex shop or something weird like that in some sketchy neighborhood. And he got paranoid. So he called 911. The guy called the cops 
himself, right? Now, before the cops got there, he got paranoid and he ran out into the street, very busy street. And the security guards that worked at this adult shop got worried. And they went and they, they subdued him and they cuffed him, right? They put handcuffs on him, supposedly to, to protect him from being killed in traffic. Then the police that Tony Timpa called show up and he's already in cuffs, right? So now the police take over and they, they call the paramedics, right? But in the meantime, they now pin him to the ground, right? Uh, face down, just like um, uh, Floyd was. And the officer basically has his knee on his, on, on his back and, his, and, and they actually, they, they hogtied uh, his, his feet together and they, he's cuffed and they're, 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 they're pushing him down to the ground. And before they pushed him down there, he was, you know, kind of moving around. He was trying to get up and they were preventing him from, from getting up. Now, they are restraining him for 14 minutes. The entire time that they are restraining him, the guy is screaming for his life. Please let me up. Please don't kill me. Don't kill me. Please, please. Over and over again, screaming, and he's afraid he's going to die. Now, the policemen are reassuring him. You're not going to die. You're going to be okay. What are you on? What did you take? Um, and, you know, when I first watched the shorter version, I was really, really angered because you see the policemen, they're actually laughing. I said, if later on, it, you know, he, he, the guy stops moving. He passes out. He actually dies. They don't know that. They think he falls asleep. And after a while, when he's not moving, they're like, you know, what happened to him? I think he's asleep, you know. Um, but then when the paramedics arrive on the scene, which is now about 14 minutes, that's when they finally get off of him. They didn't even, you know, they didn't even stop restraining him. Even though he wasn't moving, they kept restraining him. The same thing they did with, with George Floyd. And so the paramedics come and they, they try to roll him over to put him in the ambulance. And that's when they, they're like, they, now they're worried. And one guy actually says, God, I hope, I hope we didn't kill him. Right. And, 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 and then the other guy's like, what do you mean we? Like, ah, you're the one that, you know, so, and they, they kind of laugh about it, right? And, you know, when I first saw them laughing, I mean, God, this, they think this guy might be dead and they're laughing, but it became obvious to me when I watched the whole thing that at that point, they really tried to help him originally and they didn't think he was dead. That's why they were kind of joking because they were pretty sure he was alive. It wasn't until he got into the ambulance and the, and the, and the paramedics were like, this guy's not breathing. And then nobody's laughing. And then they're trying to save his life. They're trying to resuscitate him but they weren't able to do it. And so he, he died, right? And so the, the autopsy that they performed uh, said that it was a homicide. I'm reading, I wrote it down here. De cause of death, sudden cardiac death due to toxic effects of cocaine and the psychological stress associated with physical restraint, right? So his death was ruled a homicide. Three of the five policemen were indicted by a grand jury for a crime, but they were indicted for a misdemeanor, it, not, not even a felony, not even like manslaughter, third degree murder. They were indicted for a misdemeanor. Remember, the guy died after being restrained by four, for 14 minutes, caught on film, uh, and it was a misdemeanor. But then the charges were dropped. They didn't even stand trial for the misdemeanor. They didn't have to plead guilty to the misdemeanor. The charges were dropped. And then on top of that, they got their jobs back on the police. They got reinstated uh, by the police. So this is my whole point, right? This story never made it out of Dallas. It never became a national story, right? A guy killed by police and the policemen suffer no consequences, right? And imagine what would have happened four years ago, right, if Tony Timpa had been black. Everything else had been exactly the same, right? No difference. The exact same circumstances. Just change one thing. Just make Tony Timpa black instead of white. This would have been a national story. This would have been all we were talking about. How can these racist white cops be laughing as they murdered an African-American? Right. This shows you how black lives don't matter. This black life mattered so little that they were laughing about it as he died. 
They would be saying, this is murder. This isn't an accident. They deliberately held him down. They kept his knee on him for 14 minutes, even though he's screaming and begging for his life and saying, don't kill me. These racist cops killed him anyway. When that's not what they did. In fact, you know, when I read a little bit about why the cops, again, were restraining him, they were afraid that he was going to run into the road and, and, and maybe get run over and get killed. And they didn't want that to happen. They thought they would be blamed that the guy in their custody ran into the street and got run down by a car. But obviously, I think that they chose the wrong way to restrain him. I mean, I don't know. Why didn't they just put him in the back of a police car and shut the door? Uh, you know, maybe they just assumed the ambulance would get there sooner. I don't know. You come up with all kinds of reasons. But to me, they appeared negligent. The cops, maybe they were young. Maybe they, they, they should have been better trained. I mean, were they just bad guys? Maybe. I don't know. But... All of the arguments that are being made now about the four officers uh, that killed George Floyd, you could have made all those arguments even stronger, given the laughter. I mean, could you imagine people laughing as somebody is dying? Right. So I think these circumstances would have even been worse, right, as far as the black community would have been concerned about how much this proved uh, that racist police are out there and that, that black lives don't matter. But to me, what we're seeing now shows you exactly how much black lives do matter. Because here, when you have a black person who is killed by police, everybody wants justice for this guy and his family. Everybody wants these officers to be prosecuted to the fullest extent of the law. They don't want him just fired. They want him in jail for a long, long time. Yet, when you had a group of officers basically do the same thing to a white guy, there was no demand that there would be justice for his family or him. There was no demand that the police be held accountable for what they did. No, it just, it's just it's an obscure event. Now, part of it is because the media ignored it, right? I mean, maybe there was an uproar a little bit in Dallas. I don't know. Uh, but it didn't go beyond there. And that's because the media doesn't care about those stories. Right. If a white guy is killed by white policemen, that's not news. They don't care about police brutality. But if it's a black guy and now they can make it a racial issue, that's a story. That's what they want. They wait for these kind of stories to exploit them. And then, you know, you have this whole cottage industry out there. The Black Lives Matter, the Antifa. They are waiting for this to happen. Right. And it's going to happen. Right. If policemen kill civilians. Right. I mean, as a percentage of all the arrests and all the encounters, it's still small, but you have all these policemen all over the country, and sometimes people get killed. And sometimes those people are black. It's going to happen. It doesn't mean that they're killed because they were black. This guy, Tony Tippa, he wasn't black. He was as white as you could be, yet he was killed. His death was ruled a homicide. So... When you go back and see, it's not just because he was black. That's the whole narrative right now, right? That it only happened because he was black. And this proves that we're a racist society. Well, it doesn't, right? The police are equal opportunity uh, uh, abusers when it comes to potentially use of excessive force. They're as likely to use it on a white guy as they are a black guy, right? So it's not race, but they are making this a, a racial issue. But again, I would just encourage anybody out there to go online and just, just check this out and, 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 and just imagine, and especially if you could find a shorter version, there's just like four or five minute clips that don't show all of the, you know, the, the initial part where, you know, the, the officers, uh, you know, show that they're, they're, they're concerned with this guy and they're trying to help him, right? If you skip all that and just go to the later part where he's really screaming and then he dies and they start laughing. If you just look at that little part, it's much worse. Then when you go back uh, to, to the very beginning and see how it all started. But, you know, the, the, there, would have been a, there would have been an uproar. There would have been a furor over that. Uh, and so what I am trying to do by bringing it up, I'm not trying to diminish what happened to George Floyd. That's still uh, an awful tragedy uh, that he died and he shouldn't have died and the policeman uh, should have uh, taken better care of him, just like the policeman probably should have taken better care of Tony Timpo. And had they taken Betty care of him, he probably wouldn't die. Yeah, there were other extenuating circumstances. He was on cocaine. George Floyd was doing something. He was having trouble breathing anyway. He had a heart condition. So there were some extenuating factors where if George Floyd and Tony Timpa 
had been totally healthy and not taking drugs, then what the police did probably wouldn't have resulted in their deaths. But because they had some other circumstances, that's exactly what happened. And so the, per the point is, it can happen to anybody. It doesn't matter what color you are. And so if we're going to make an issue of it at all, it should be one about the police need better training, right? Uh, they need to have better procedures uh, or, or whatever. It's about reforming potentially the police department to protect everybody equally, right? That to protect white people who may be killed because of negligence or excessive force and black people and Hispanics and Asian Americans and not try to use this to advance an agenda that really has at its very core socialism. That's what they're trying to do. They're trying to push a socialist big government agenda on us by, by introducing it under the guise of racism. We need to stamp out racism. How do we do that? By making government bigger, by making government more powerful, by having all these programs. And I talked at length on my last podcast. And in fact, we pulled that part out and we put up a clip of my last podcast where we just focused on these issues. But the point that I made on that podcast, it was the government policy is rewarding companies for discriminating. And whereas the free market uh, would, would, would punish them. And so what we really need is more capitalism and less government. But what we're going to get is more government and less capitalism because we're going to take something that isn't racial at all and we're going to pretend it's racial. And then because it's racial, we're using that as uh, the reason why we need all these additional government programs that are basically going to result in even greater disparities than exist today between the African-American community and the larger population. We're just going to drive those disparities and make them worse with the additional laws and regulations and programs that are going to be enacted, right, that instead of helping them, will end up hurting them, which again, Everything the government does, the, the um, consequence is the opposite of the intent. And the same thing happens with all of these laws that are designed to stamp out racism or stamp out discrimination. We end up getting more discrimination. We end up hurting most the very people that we're intending to help. And the same thing is going to happen by trying to take this issue and make it into something racial when it's not. In fact, if you assume it's racial, just because uh, the person who dies is black and the people who killed him are white, if you simply assume that that is racial, just based on the races of the individuals, then that is being racist, right? If you, without any evidence whatsoever, if you just jump to a conclusion based purely on race, right? That's all you're doing is you're, you're making your decisions based on the races and no other information. And now you're saying that it was racially motivated then that's racist. So why don't we get beyond racism right, and, and get to the core of the matter, get to the real economic problems that the government is doing. That's what people have to worry about. It's government, not some racist boogeyman. It's big government. That's what uh, the African-American community needs to worry about. Get government off your neck. It's the government's foot that is suffocating the black community and not just the black community, the entire nation is suffocating under the weight of the government. So let's remove that weight. Let's make government smaller and let's make the economy freer and bigger. But the most sensational aspect of the Tony Tippa uh, case, if Tony Tippa were black, would have been the fact that Tony is the one who called the police, right? In the George Floyd case, he was, you know, committing a crime. He was passing a phony money. So the somebody else called the police and they came to apprehend George Floyd. But in the Tony Tippa situation, Tony himself called the police. He was worried and he called the police. And so the police came. They responded for his cry for help. But when they showed up, instead of helping him, they murdered him. They killed him in cold blood. That's exactly what would have been said if Tony was black. They would have said, this is what it's like to be black in America. When black people call the cops, they get killed, right? When white people call the cops, the cops come to help them. But when a black person calls the cops, they end up getting killed because black lives don't matter, right? Because the plaques, the cops are racist, right? They don't like blacks. They just assume 
blacks are criminals. And so the minute they show up and they see a black guy, you know, they, they, they take him down and they kill him. That is exactly what they would have said, right? They would have said it was all about the white racist police killing a black person. And all the black person did was call the police for help. And this, again, is this is what it's like to be black in America. You can't just call the police like a white person because we don't have white privilege. A white person calls the cops and they come to help. A black person calls the cops and they get murdered, right? This is what they would have said. And nobody would have been able to push up against that narrative. It would have been all on video. And this is exactly what everybody could have said, except none of it would have been true because they did this to a white person. All of this bad stuff happened to a white guy. A white guy called the cops and the cops he called killed him. Didn't matter. He didn't have any white privilege. It didn't get him off the hook. He still got killed. But you can always pretend that it's because he's black. When anything happens to somebody who happens to be black, you can always say that black is why it happened. And how do you stand against that? Because the minute you say that's not why it happened, oh, you're a racist yourself. You don't understand the suffering that blacks are enduring because how do you know? You've got white privilege. So whenever somebody plays the race card, I mean, you just got to fold, right? And they would have done that, believe me, in spades uh, with Tony Tippa. But he was white, so they couldn't do it. But now you have a circumstance where the person who dies happens to be black. And yes, the cops could have acted outrageously and recklessly, but they could have done the exact same thing if he was white, which is exactly what happened with Tony Tippa. Only Tony Tippa uh, wasn't black. He was white, so it was no big deal. And George Floyd, he's black. So, aha, this is racist. And now we can play it up. Uh, you know, he, he, we can... Uh, 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 you know, sanctify this guy or canonize him. He's, you know, he's now our hero and uh, he's, he's an example of why black lives don't matter and why we have a racist society. And so that point in particular, right, the fact that he called the police on his own and ended up dead, I think that would have been the big thing. That and the laughter, right? You call the cops and not only do they come and kill you, but they laugh about it as they're doing it.